today, actually, I want to talk about intelligent agriculture production system uh, based on climate, crop, and field information. Actually, uh, we started this project some, about two years ago. Uh, we are just uh, first stages. Okay, I'm going to share with you some our some uh, research results. Okay, the outline looks like this. Uh, all the many people is uh, review the issues in, in uh, current issues in agriculture. So I want to briefly overview the issues. And second, I want to introduce an Italian agriculture production system, actually uh, uh, consisting of monitoring system and decision making system and some egg trading systems. And finally, I want to talk about some uh, strategies to uh, speed up applying this system to real fields. Okay, as you know, it's the world population will be grown it's very quickly. <clears throat> Actually, in 2015, uh, the world population reaches around 9.5 or 9.6 <coughs> billions. Actually, at that time, the half of the world populations will be in Asia or in Africa. <coughs> The top 10 countries in 15.5 is India, China, Nigeria, United States, Indonesia, Pakistan, Brazil, Bangladesh, Ethiopia, and Philippines. This means Asia and Africa will be a key place for future production, food, uh, food productions. So in these countries, the agriculture will be, yeah, will be important more and more. So this figure, okay, this figure shows the some um, the amount of food production required. Actually, this line shows the so how much food production increased. So, if we use the current agriculture production systems, the amount of food production will be reached in the, uh, will be in line. But this line shows the amount of food actually required in futures. There are big gaps. This means probably the current agriculture production system is, may not be enough for future some society. So what we should do? Probably we should do improved current agriculture production system, or we should develop some different type of agriculture production systems. As a point of view engineers, I am interested in these areas. How can you improve the current agriculture production system? Or just a little different the agriculture production systems using very developed technologies. Okay, so far, our, we are interested in uh, increased uh, productivity. So that means we actually have overused the chemicals, such as fertilizer and chemicals. And actually, this is actually accumulated now is we can find the many some chemicals residues in foods. So the last few weeks uh, you can heard this news actually fast out residue was found in eggs in many countries and Korea is the same. The, actually the market of eggs is uh, shut down so the government is uh, was uh, closed the egg production egg distributions. So it can be if it can have many times it can be digested for food, food, food distributions. So why this happens? So far, we have overused too much chemicals. So in futures, probably we cannot. So that means we need more foods, but we cannot, more, we cannot use more fertilizers. It's a current our problem. So we want to improve the uh, production, but we should do that with a minimum of chemicals. That's our current challenge. Okay, this figure shows the organic agriculture land in uh, for last 15 years. Actually, organic agriculture land is increasing these patterns, especially in developed countries, the, the, uh, the area of organic agriculture is increased. So in futures, definitely, this organic, organic agriculture land is being increased. Does this mean Actually, we should increase the food production, but this may not be health to increase food productions. So that means we should increase food productions, but many obstacles, food safety issues, and this 
environment friendly agriculture. How we can solve these issues? Yeah, all the many people talk about climate change may cause yield loss. Yeah, I don't want to mention anymore. So, so in uh, we actually the hot hot issue is food security. So in futures, definitely world population increased. So we had the food security will be major issues. So major country, and though a lot of, many countries is focusing on. In, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sh yeah. Many countries are interested in improving the food security. For example, in Korea. We have a food, a food self sufficient, which except the feed for livestock, let's say in 50%. But grain self sufficient, which is include the feed for livestock, only 24%. But in Korea, the consumption of meat is keep increased. So Korean government is uh, very worrying about these things. So the Korean government moved, actually improved to 40%, but in the future. But it is very, very difficult. So now it's in this situation, so we are linked the 28 in global food security index. But the, uh, the actually the developed countries are linked to top levels. But under developed countries, it's linked to high levels. But the, uh, all of these countries was moved to the top ranks. They were not improved agricultural production systems. Yeah, as I mentioned, actually in the future, so we have to improve the food production in quantity levels. Also, there are increased demand for safe food or environment friendly agriculture in quality levels. But we can actually, so far, uh, uh, the current product, agricultural production systems cannot do both in quantity and quality levels. So how we can do, how, how we can do it, that is our goal. So another issue is, uh, there are demand for business model for high economic return agriculture. So for example, in Korea, last three years, the Korean economy is uh, developed very fastly. But the difference between the income, the difference of income between rural area, urban area is getting larger and larger. That means agriculture can give us some high economic return compared to the person working in rural, uh, urban areas Probably not. So we should also develop some business model that can give us a high economic returns. Another issue is <clears throat> uh, world population uh, uh, grows very fastly. So many countries so want uh, or says, uh, improve the some food securities. So that means each country's want is a high global competitiveness in agriculture with some high technologies. I'm not sure you agree or not. So uh, when we develop some technology, that, what is the major goal? I think it's the major goal of improve the quality of the life quality. So actually, so please think about that, the person working in rural areas and growers farmers. Their life quality is good compared to the some urban areas. I think it's so develop some technology. That the technology should be uh, contributed to improve the life quality of person working in agriculture. I think these are the challenge, current challenge in agriculture. So as an, as an ag engineering, my goal is how can you solve these issues? Probably I cannot, but I'm I'm interested in how can I contribute to, this, to solve these issues. Okay, my answer to the, my answer to probably we can solve, probably although we cannot solve, we can contribute to solve these issues using innovation of agricultural products and systems, using data transformation, transformation technologies. In some countries, this is called the fourth industrial revolution technologies. As you know, it's a fourth industrial revolution technology uh, society is highly connected and highly intelligent based on technology, the IoT, global UAV, artificial intelligence, big data, 3D printers. Actually, I want to apply this technology to agriculture. 
Okay, intelligent agriculture production systems. Actually, this video shows was provided by John Deere, which is the largest agricultural machinery company uh, about yes, four and five years ago. This video actually shows the, some uh, imaginary future agricultures uh, four and five years ago. So growers is so uh, wake up in the morning and access the cloud server system, uh, looking the weather. Can you turn on the sound? And they can make order of the agriculture works. And if it takes a hit, and actually the agriculture robot works in the field. About four and five years ago, it is a really future agriculture. Probably it may not be possible in near future, but now it is possible. Actually, this video shows the connected farm uh, integrated solution. It is provide this uh, Trimble. Actually, it is in market now. Trimble's connected farm offers a dashboard to help farmers manage all their information from one location by using a web browser connected okay, to the Okay, all the information this information in the platforms from your office. Okay, we can actually access tablet, any information related to some crop management. Or in the cab using Trimble's TMX 2050 display. Once you have logged in, okay, where the information from uh, climate information over there. If you click as a they provide some site specific information on there. For example, also there is some uh, there are many agricultural machinery working in the fields. And future market okay. prices delayed by only 10 minutes. So actually, this, this is weather info. Uh, they provide weather information, previous weather information, and, and future uh, weather information inside the specific areas. Adjust the widgets by shrinking, moving, and expanding. Your finished layout will be saved okay. automatically. Once you've completed your layout, so but is here the most the, the key position. information is the weather, the For scientific example, specific weather and climate information. If it is not accurate, this, we this, cannot make any decisions any for uh, agriculture works. In this section, so there are many some agriculture machinery work in the fields. Okay, this system is directly connected to some agricultural machinery. So if we control all the agricultural machinery in this here, if we can stop the operating, why we can uh, doing some other jobs. Okay, but anyway, so in the previous slide, John Deere said, okay, it is possible in near future, but, uh, 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 but four or five years ago, now it is in market. The approach technology uh, the developed is very fastly. It shows us the location. Okay, I'm an engineer. As a perspective, uh, a perspective view of engineers, I define the agriculture production systems. Okay, let's consider uh, doing agriculture as a system. That means system means has input and outputs. Okay, this is uh, actually the uh, systems. There's uh, input and outputs. What can be input in agriculture? The labor, chemicals, or water, energy, environment control can be input. Yeah, definitely there are many more inputs, but I can summarize this as input. And what is the output? Yeah, there are many outputs, but I define output as a quantity and quality of agriculture production. So the major goal of the system to improve the efficiency. Efficiency means the ratio of output to input. To improve the efficiency, definitely the output should increase and the input should be decreased. But in Korea, so we just said, in Korea, in Korea is the agriculture product is uh, reached the highest two levels. So that means it's almost saturated. So that means it is not easy. Although we provide more input, it is not easy to increase the output. So what, how we can improve the uh, efficiency? We cannot improve this output the way we should decrease this input. So that means we should sustain the maintained output with minimum input. Our job is to decrease this input, although the output maintains. 
that is the major issues in these systems. Okay, I want to define an intelligent aircraft. Okay. <coughs> okay, and this system is consists of three component aircraft monitoring systems. So in traditional way, it's a growers go to the field and look at the, some crop and field and what's the design. But now the, uh, the sensors, the soil and crop sensor will be used. Okay, so in the field, it's, uh, a lot of sensors will be distributed. And this sensor will collect the data. And this data will be transported to the server using ICT and IoT. And then the data will be analyzed using the big data with some machine learning technology or static method, any, any things. And then we'll make a decision. What? Actually, our interesting when the input should be applied, how much should be applied, and where should be applied. That is the major issues. So in decision-making system, decide these three things. And then the decide input should be applied in the field at the right place. It is called actuating systems. And the, and for the last decades, we actually used agricultural machinery. But agricultural machinery is not enough to precise control actuated. So these days, agricultural robot is developed or drone or UAV is developed. And this system is repeated and checking the output and input. And repeated, this process is repeated. This means it's called supervised learning, unsupervised learning. Actually, the AlphaGo, which playing the game of Go, is used this method. Okay, we adopt this technology and we keep learning. And finally, the output is saturated the highest level, the input is saturated the lowest level. At that time, the system is stabilized. So, I, in this case, the yesterday or today, many people is working on some uh, what is climate and weather predictions. Yeah, this information is very important. That, that is uh, uh, one of the key information in these systems. Weather information is put in here and this can be used. So an intelligent agriculture production system can maximize the efficiency. That means the increased output and minimized input of the system by unsupervised loading with the minimal intersection of humans. So we don't need to worry about how it works. Just a system independently works. OK, this is just yield map. It says the green color shows the highest yield, but the red color is the lowest yield. How can you improve the yield with minimum inputs? OK, the highest yield is we don't need to worry about. Just but to improve the total yield, so we have to focus in the lowest yield areas. So actually, at this point, we have to provide the inputs. How can you provide this input? Actually, right time. Actually, when the input should be implied, applied, and how much the input should be applied, and where. It's, it's three is principle, we should apply the input. So this can actually uh, minimize the input and maximize the output. That means minimize input and maximize yield. This is the concept of precision agriculture. Actually, in monitoring, in monitoring systems, there are some several methods. As you know, it's a satellite, the UAB, and mobile lover, some biosensors. But in this way, the, the technology covers large areas, but the sensitivity is low. But in this way, the cover the area small, but high sensitivity. For example, biosensors can cover the various some cell levels. They can actually cover the very small areas, but sensitivity is very good. So in monitoring system, in future, in monitoring system, we can combine several methods to get the best result. So far, it's many, uh, some several sensors were used. About 10 years ago, the field server was developed in Japan. Actually, the camera sensors are mounted here and uh, measured this, um, weather information, field information, and transport while using the wireless communications. And then European and American uh, USA, the, all these sensors were mounted the mobile uh, agriculture machinery or mobile robot like this, several this. But this, this drone technology is very uh, developed very quickly, and these sensors was miniaturized and mounted in drone systems. So we can monitor, we can collect the data it's very easily and quickly. Yeah, so far the user, the sensors, 
uh, was uh, imaging the spectroscope and imaging sensors are commonly used. So for this, okay, uh, so I, I will skip these areas. Okay, in monitoring systems, I strongly I suggest. Okay, I'm not a plant scientist, but I'm not sure why we have too many sensors to estimate the crop information. For example, the final, our final goal is to estimate the crop's status. So actually, it is easy to directly communicate the, the crops, but using current technology is not possible. So that is why we collect the many data around the crops and using some uh, statistical method and mathematical, we analyze and then we finally decide probably the crop need this, this, this some things. But this is time consuming but it's not much accurate. So that is why, okay, let's try to make us some communicate with the uh, crop directly. So here. Current method we use the some spectroscope imaging technology. So but this sensitivity low and this is, but instead, they can cover large areas. But it is not easy to diagnose in early stages. But this is indirect sense method. But the major advantage, okay, this sense method is covered larger. That means we can measure the canopy levels. So, and then I want to move to the canopy levels and molecular levels. Okay, we using the micro nano biosensor technology. Okay, this sensor not give us a high sensitivity, but this is a small field of view. It's possible to diagnose in early stages. The major things, okay, to uh, improve the yield this, by uh, monitoring the crop status, we should diagnose the crop stress, disease, nutrients in a very early stages. But this technology is not possible. So I want to combine these two things and I want to diagnose these things in a very early stages. Okay, we do some, uh, actually, uh, we want to detect some uh, drought in a very early stages. Okay, so one of my colleagues developed some biomarker for drought, and actually we developed some paper sensors. Very cheap, but it's easy to use in the field. Just drop on sample, and the, the color is changed like this. So actually, we can detect the drought. It's a very early stages. The symptoms is not shown, but our sensor is uh, show, okay, now it is in drought. So this paper sensor is uh, integrated in the smartphone, and we can easily detect droughts in early stages in the fields. Also, we are working on some sensor to detect the disease or some other things. Okay, actually, I got this slide uh, from uh, Dr. Chun Zhang Zhao in China about three years ago. At the time when I visited China, it, it, he introduced, okay, they want to um, scan the crops using very precise radio scanning systems. And this they scan, just they actually measure the um, width of leaf and the slope or some many, many molecular character, very precise molecular characteristics. And that put the information in the uh, simulation simulations. And they just control the input. Again, they check what's going on yield. So that means they are working on virtual farming, these systems. Actually, in the agriculture, so to get some result, it takes a long time. It's a time consuming, labor, labor intensive. So in future, if you develop this kind of virtual farming, it is called the cyber physical systems. Probably we can improve the semiculture production uh, systems. So another thing is uh, uh, now I'm working on, like to maximize the yield, uh, uh, we have to check, actually we have to maximize the efficiency at each step. For example, in uh, rice, ply, ri or rice crop management, actually we pass the plowing, transplanting, these pest management and harvesting. So to maximize the yield, we have to uh, control precisely each steps. Okay. Okay, plowing stages, uh, as you know, in fat fields, there are some uh, elevation, surface elevation variation. It caused some, uh, or some past, past and this is happening. And also, it can affect the yield. So, 
so many growers want to uniform, uniformize surface elevations. But it is not easy to measure the surface elevation in a 10 centimeter resolution. So we used some drones. Actually, this blue color shows some uh, low surface elevation, so that color so shows the, some high surface elevation. To make a uniform, we have to move this, the soil in this area, this area. Actually, this figure shows the, how much we should uh, take out the soil and move to these areas. And we can give this information to uh, farmers. So actually, right, uh, right at the transplant, we took the images and we actually recognized this plant and measured some distance between row and the plant is. And finally, we can detect it how, how many plants are missing. Then we can make uh, some plant density map. It's a blue dot that shows the some missed plant areas. And then we coordinate we coordinated each plant. We give sector coordinate and we manage uh, this plant each each plant during uh, by harvestings. And growing stages uh, actually uh, to monitor the crop growth is uh, usually we measure the on on the ground. Uh, first, we try to uh, actually take the image and analyze the uh, uh, reflectance. Actually, this uh, by analyzing this reflectance, they show the very good correlation. So, but at the time, I questions actually at the time I have questions about why we have to measure the reflectance just to measure the ground measurement. This is indirect method. If we directly measure the some morphological characteristics, it's much easier. So now we are taking the image at very low altitude and use and make some 3D image and analyze morphological characteristics the direct way. And it's uh, right before harvesting, we took the image and using some image processing technology and deep learning technology, and we can count the grain and each plant is, and this shows that some very good correlations are real yields. Okay, and this is the making system is actually, uh, first step is collecting data, weather, soil, crop in various conditions, and then we analyze this data using some big data, deep learning, or some statistical, uh, statistical mathematical way, and finally we make a model, and then validate this model in various environments. Now we are doing, sure, uh, uh, we are doing this procedure. So, in, so in this project, so we don't have much information, site-specific weather information. So that is our some current problem. So, uh, so in Korea, uh, it is not easy to get the site-specific precise weather information. Okay, many companies in USA and European, so now uh, they are working on integrated farming systems. Actually, they collect a bunch of data and analyze and give us some, uh, what is this, uh, some comment to growers. When you should provide input, how much, and where. And this is agriculture Lobos. Uh, the first video from uh, Professor Noguchi at Hokkaido University in Japan uh, they have uh, some technology uh, uh, doing um, air, uh, air, uh, autonomous agriculture machinery. So Japan wants to commercialize all the uh, agricultural robots by 2020. So in this actually developed some uh, research group. Actually the sensor detected the was, uh, status alone and uh, was uh, provide the uh, chemicals at different levels. Okay, so. Oh, okay. Also, one of our colleague works on a so drone. Actually, he attached the robot arm and drone, and this drone is uh, collected the uh, harvesting the fruit vegetables. Also, they use uh, some multiple drone and working together, and they can move with uh, some uh, their cultures and product like this. Also, he actually uh, mounted the transmitter in the very in a small insect, and they attached the receiver as a drone, and this communicate and tracking the insect, and finally found the residue of insect. You are working on that. Also, he can control many drones, many tractors in the office, everything. I'm working on this as well. Okay, I want some 
uh, tractor, autonomous tractors in rubber, and the uh, wire the drone is attached. And this is kind of commander. This uh, drone is command the many you know, mobile rubber and give us some information each tractors and uh, optimize the working. Okay, so so far I'm talking about internal agriculture production systems, but it is not easy to make it in the uh, near futures. Also, it needs some long time and needs some bunch of uh, funding. So uh, our strategy is first, we want to make uh, some test bed in a large, some kind of reclaimed uh, areas from water. And this is a big, huge, we want to make uh, this huge, we want to um, take the huge test bed uh, with a different uh, some scales, some kind of one hectare, some one hundred hectares. And we want to put all the technology we develop and test in the field and collect the data long time, about 10 years. Then we can probably, our system will be more available in the field conditions. So here, this is Google's self-driving car. This is autonomous tractors, okay? The major goal of Google's self-driving car is transportation of humans. But the autonomous track is not transportation. The major goal of autonomous track is optimization, implement, uh, optimization working are implemented, which is attached to the tractors. So for example, if you wanna change the, uh, the plowing depths, okay, if you wanna have some different plowing depths, the moving speed is slowed, moving speed is decreased. If you wanna uh, plow in a low depths, the moving speed, traveling speed is increased. So. The major goal is just a little different, but there's a core technology almost very similar. So now we suggest the Korean government, okay, this technology will be similar. So Korean government is saying support some money uh, for developing this core technology. And the technology can be applied in multiple areas. So for this, okay, by this, we can save time and we can save money. Okay, in these things, okay, I said, okay, you can see this actually find as a plant and just spraying only the plants. Actually, this technology saves some chemicals a lot. So this, okay, is excavated. So the field condition is not much uniform, it's not much smooth. So this is kind of transformations. Actually, agricultural machine, in future agricultural machine, it's, uh, it's a change like this. But anyway, it does not work. But anyway, so in futures, to develop or to improve agriculture, intelligent production systems, so we need innovative ideas. So also researchers uh, also should be creative. So now we are uh, working on this project where we educated uh, our research group for this way. <laughs>